So in some parts of the country, winter seems to just drag on far too long. But spring conditions are cropping up in some areas, so it's about time we talk about your yard. Dennis Flanagan is the manager of Landscape Ontario. It's a non-profit organization representing over 2,000 companies promoting the benefits of horticulture. So, Dennis, I guess there won't be any planting in PEI, but once the snow <laughs> clears, the first thing you want to do in the spring is fix up your lawn. So what are your tips on creating the perfect green lawn? Absolutely. Um, what people are going to look at when they first go outside this time of the year, the lawn is going to look a little bit like this. Uh, I brought my grass to you at the CBC, this little patch of lawn here. First thing you want to do is get rid of all this dead grass and leaves that are in the lawn. And using a nice, strong spring rake like this is absolutely ideal. Just drag that through the grass and those tines take care of that. The next thing is to think about what's in the ground, two or three inches below that grass. That's what's essential. So if you flip this up, that's what we want to get at. We want to get at the roots of the grass, and the best way to do that is to actually use a fork, like a pitchfork, to get into the roots. So you're going to go down about two or three inches because when you fertilize, when you top dress, that's when you want that to get down there. People that have bigger areas, Andrew, are going to rent something like an aerator to go over the property. After you've aerated, what you want to do is get some topsoil and this is called top dressing and the idea of this is to even out all the little bumps on a lawn and add obviously some nutrition to the lawn and that's going to go into that holes that we created the next step is grass seed do not uh, go cheap on grass seed get quality grass seed and basically you're doing that the secret is a, of a really green lawn this spring is prevention is better than cure so the thicker and stronger you can get your grass early in the season, what it does, it crowds out all the weed seeds and yet you, you, you don't have a problem. So get out there early, rake, aerate, top dress, grass seed. This grass seed will germinate in about 10 days, Andrew, and you have to keep that moist. You have to put a sprinkler on that for that 10 days before it'll actually germinate. Okay, well, some really good tips there for, for, for your lawn. As for the flowering plants that you have there, can people start planting the flowers in the garden now, or is it still a little too cold, you know, in that five to seven degrees, and then it kind of dips right around freezing at night, right? Yeah, so you ha you're right. You have to be careful. Uh, what we call the cool weather plants, and I'm going to actually sort of talk about that in a minute and finish off a container, and that's what these are. So I'm going to get to that. What you've got to be a little bit more cautious of is, of course, the garden centers are starting to brim with plants like this right now. Um, and you've got to, you can buy them as long as you're willing not to leave them out at night when the temperatures, as you said, are going to dip be below zero. And these are just a little too tender for that. Uh, petunias are probably the number one choice for sun still. Um, but just a touch early for things like that. Uh, geraniums, uh, this is an ivy leaf geranium, beautiful if you want a cascading look in a garden or a container. Again, just a word of caution probably in most parts of, parts of the country, just a trifle too early to leave that out in the daytime temperatures. And, and then, uh, Dennis, tell us a little bit about uh, sun, because a lot of people, uh, you know, want to know, you know, what flowers seem to do better in the sun than others. Yes, you know, Andrew, that's a very good question, and they fall into those categories of sun and shade. A basic rule of thumb to think about is Mother Nature sort of tells us something. Anything that has a yellow flower and has a daisy-like flower tends to do well in the sun. And, and, and so it should. It's a golden flower, and that's what Mother Nature tells us to do. Things that uh, tend to be a little on the greener side, and these are just general terms. This is a lovely plant called Helleborus, which you can plant this time of year. This is a perennial. It pops up early in the garden, uh, dies back in the summer, and will come up again next spring. And that's a typical of a shade plant. I've got this growing in my garden under a Japanese maple. It's absolutely gorgeous in about two weeks from now. Dennis, good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Some great tips there. Thanks for bringing in all those props for us. Andrew, thank you.